Yeah. These masked thugs barged into my home. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Now, a lot of Muslim YouTubers have come out condemning the invasion of Abu Layth's home, and I think rightly so. Rightly so, yes. Abu Layth has spoken of his very young daughters and wife being traumatised by it, and it's hard not to put your own wife and children in their place and only imagine what they would have gone through that night. That includes some of his biggest critics, as far as I'm aware. Just after the incident, Abu Layth actually blamed Brother Hijab for inciting the attack in his first Facebook post, which I think is unfair. But considering what he had just been through, watching no doubt the fear in his little daughter's eyes, I think we can forgive him for understandably lashing out. But Brother Hijab did also come forward with a post saying that he utterly condemns the atrocious attack. Al-Islam production the Bradford outfit, whom have really gone after Abu Layth of late, especially leading up to Ramadan, have also condemned the attack, saying that there's no justification for it. I think this is all a positive thing and the responsible thing to do in the circumstances, and I was hoping this would happen, because we have to be able to disagree with each other forcefully, robustly, without contributing to an atmosphere of lawlessness where private homes are violated and people's precious wives and daughters, whom have nothing at all to do with the online polemical world, are attacked and traumatised forever. We have to draw a red line and this is it. Even if you're not moved by pity and compassion, you ought to be persuaded by selfish reasons. Today it's Abu Layth's home, his wife and his daughters. Tomorrow, what if you say something that isn't acceptable to some random nutcase? For then it might be your home, your wife and your daughters facing this treatment. So it's in everyone's interest that we stamp this out here and now. Having said all that, it would be naive and disingenuous of anybody to say all this and equally ignore the foul hypocrisy at play here. The home invasion was wrong and we obviously condemn it, but we must also condemn and challenge the hypocrisy without justifying the attack. There is a fine balance here between empathy and sympathy. We should be able to understand something, the mechanics of how something works and happens, the causes, without justifying it. So about two years ago, 15th of March 2019, we had the awful Christchurch Mosque massacre where 51 innocent Muslims were mercilessly gunned down and a further 40 were injured by a white supremacist, not mentioning his name, because my spit is too much for him, while they prayed Friday Jumu'ah at the Al Nur Mosque and the Linwood Islamic Centre. The youngest victim was just three years old and the eldest victim was 77. We've all heard about it and seen it in the news. Some of you might have also seen the sickening footage of the killing that the fascist right wing mass murderer had streamed live on Facebook. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give them peace and Jannah and their loved ones ease. I mean, after that incident, you might have also heard of or seen the disgusting joke an Australian comedian called Isaac Butterfield made about the terrible incident. I actually did a reaction video at the time. There was a huge online and media uproar following that joke. You might not know, but Abu Layth also did a reaction video at the time. This is what he said. About that, it wasn't the 52 people who were killed. It wasn't the countless others who had their lives changed forever because their family members were taken from them. It was the hundreds of people that night who couldn't make it home from nightclubs in Christchurch because all the cabbies were dead. I feel that humour is sacred. Okay, so you, you can comment you can crack jokes, I feel, about anything. Anything. I literally do feel that a peop that people humor has a sacrosanct right to it. That people cannot make you censor humor. Yes, I may jokes are not meant to be insulting. They're meant to be funny. 
So, but they can offend. So that's, uh, and I do, I'm a, a keen advocate for that, that we can't censor jokes, even about the most horrible of things. I feel that we have to still, jokes should always be allowed to be said. You know what? I don't see no sympathy. Abulaith, where was your sympathy for those poor people who died and their families who have to live through this for the rest of their lives? Everyone, people who vehemently disagree with you and hate your guts, are today sympathising with you for what you and your family went through. And rightly so. You will say you deserve it. You're a victim of a big crime. I agree. But where was your sympathy for the victims of that heinous crime? Because then you casually kind of dismissed their suffering and pain. Because then you placed the sanctity of comedy and humour above your sympathy for sacred human life as you now like to put it. And today you expect us to buy your spiel that your sympathy for Palestinian life is behind this exile proposal of yours. My question is, where was your sympathy for Muslim life back then? Weren't they Muslim too? So why should we believe that you feel any real, genuine sympathy for the Palestinians now? We can only judge a man by his record and past deeds, and your record, sir, is inconsistent and doesn't exactly fill your fellow Muslims with confidence. Is that These tyrants, Israel is a tyrant terrorist state. It is not going to back down. It is, life comes before place. Like if you had, if you had the choice to save a life or the Kaaba, the Hadith teaches you that if it's, the Hadith says a Muslim, not even his life, his honor is much more be, important than the entire Kaaba. So ideally, it ought to become two-state solution. But I feel that that's never going to happen. Um. I then would argue for a complete exile of all Palestinians. I would say that all Palestinians should leave Palestine. And it should be facilitated for them. Uh, sorry, by Palestine, I mean the Gaza Strip and, and the parts that are um, kind of blocked in clearly by Israel. Now, I feel that they should be uh, relocated and comfortably with compensation and accommodation and education paid for in different parts of the Arab world, Arabic speaking world. So to be blunt, I'd be more convinced of your humanitarian convictions behind the exile proposal of the Palestinian idea if you weren't also reducing the significance of the Al-Aqsa Mosque to Islam and the Muslims at the same time. You see, now I'm confused. Are you saying that the Palestinians ought to leave Palestine because it's unsafe for them there? Or are you saying it's because Al-Aqsa means little to Muslims? What game are you playing? What is this? Lord, for the most part, the, the genre of Jerusalem, in my understanding, is fabricated. Um, there was never anything so special about Jerusalem except that Muslims kind of honoured it out of the... I feel the Prophet honoured it out of the love that the uh, that they were former prophets associated with it through the Judeo tradition. You know, the way it's made out later on, you have so many narrations about Jerusalem, and Jerusalem is this very holy place, and uh, it, it then becomes the third of the Thalith al-Haramain. <laughs> <laughs> this squaring a triangle goes on. <laughs> Haramain means two and Thalith means the third of the two. Right, so I uh, feel that this hadith like uh, don't travel except to the three were kind of probably fabricated in his time. That's because some people would understand if it was a humanitarian issue for you, they'd probably just about give you a pass. Just about, mind you because you're expressing a laudably sympathetic humanitarian position. But the mistake you make is, and where the suspicion and the confusion creeps in is, you also want to say in the same breath, sir, that Al-Aqsa is not important to Muslims. You conflate your humanitarian motive with a theological polemic, and you expect the average Muslim 
to not be confused and take it the wrong way. This is two taboos you are going after, sir, in one pelt. What did you seriously expect to happen? First you say the Palestinians ought to walk away from the land of their fathers, and you try to tell Muslims that Al-Aqsa is somehow not that important. Two taboos with one stone. I think you'll agree the word here is arrogance. At the very least, stupidity. You should have known that your average Muslim wouldn't be able to digest this, let alone your thug looking for an excuse to break into someone's house and threaten their wives and children. Because this is where you became dangerously irresponsible and reckless. You forgot that you have to deal with reality as it is. Devaluing the sanctity of Al-Aqsa, that flies in the face of all the evidence, is something a lot of people, even decent, sensible Muslims, will not be able to stomach and forgive you for. And this is on top of all the other stuff we don't need to get into today. I think it's time for you to ask yourself, Abu Layth, some very tough questions. I think it's time to dig real deep behind your motivations for doing YouTubing. Are you doing it to sincerely enlighten people? Do you actually believe what you're saying? Or are you just trolling your fellow Muslims? Are you being provocative for the sake of being provocative? Or are they genuinely held views? Because this is a thing. You are on YouTube and it's all about subs and views and you admit you value humour a lot. You don't consider any topic to be sacred or out of bounds. Well, that's a classic provocateur. My question is, is it worth risking the peace and the security of your family just to be a troll. I don't think it is. The world is a dangerous place. If I'm going to place my family under undue risk and stress, I'm going to bloody make sure I'm doing it for the right reasons and not just for views and subs and to provoke people. I'm going to make sure it's for the sake of Allah and my deen. And that's the sort of question you need to ask yourself as of now. I've no doubt you're going to eventually come back and sit in front of your books again, and you're going to have more sympathy subs than ever. A lot of Islamophobes will reach out to you. You will be offered incentives to go all the way, the Majid Nawaz route, if you like. So it's going to be hard for you to resist and change because you've built your brand on humour, provoking Muslims left, right and centre, and slaying sacred cows. But I think, upon reflection, that needs to change. Islam is not anybody's plaything. You don't ride the wave of Islam to make yourself famous and enrich yourself. You don't exploit Islam to crack jokes and humour your friends. That's not what Islam is for. And that's where you're going wrong. You mix the two. And that's like mixing oil and water. They just don't go. Islam is a serious, sober subject about life and death and eternity. And the biggest questions about life and death. Where we have to use the correct adab, akhlaq, sincerity. Whereas comedy is the opposite of all that. Comedy is vulgar, it's crass, it's offensive, sacrilegious by its very nature. It considers everything fair game. Hence that stupid um, Aussie comedian. He felt that he could say something as disgusting as what he said about the 52 New Zealand martyrs. Comedy gives you that license. But then you say you're a mufti. But you also want to be a comedian. Come on. This is not a tenable position. So I really think a lot of soul searching needs to happen. And I'm sure it is uh, before you come back. I think personally, I think you need to drop the fake provocateur act be genuine. If you feel that the orthodox opinion agrees with you, admit it. Don't try to be unorthodox just for the sake of it. That will help, I think, you avoid going down these unorthodox rabbit holes and eliciting unnecessary heat and backlash. For then, any risk you're taking, if you do, say, have a genuine difference of opinion in the end with the orthodoxy, then at least it will be for something that you can stand squarely behind. Be funny, sure, but in a less vulgar way. I think that's the only way 
you're ever going to balance the two and safely do your YouTubing. The other way is, of course, going the Majid Nawaz route, which is turning your back on, on, on religion um, completely and just being a comedian and, you know, having Islam as a sort of a cultural label and drawing on that. But I think you've invested too much into your religion throughout your life to to be able to dismiss it just like that. And I, th I don't think you will because I think it's it's a part of your identity. But at the same time, you've got these two conflicting sides of your personality. You've got religion and you've got your humour, and the two are almost diametrically opposed, it seems. And it's getting you in a lot of trouble. And, you know, I don't envy you being in this position, and it's going to be hard, but I think a lot of thought needs to go in what, what's going to happen next. Okay, I'm going to leave it there. Assalamu alaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh.